Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't speak in there. Right. Um, yeah, it's going to be on a bit of an angle. Okay, was there, has anybody got any questions at the moment while we're just setting this thing up? Yeah, I'll just, yeah, scream out, yell out. Pardon? Um, it was four years. <laughs> I, we um, started out, these, these here are the guys that, um, who were the main um, team that made it. There's Dean at the back on the um, left hand side and then there's Ken who's here, Terry who played Ozzy and Craig who's also here, played Giles. And then in the front row there's Michael who was Frank and then me in the middle. Oh God. And, um, and Peter O'Hearn who played Barry and uh, um, like those guys there were the main crew and um, most of them were just um, people that I worked with at the Evening Post. I, I used to go to school with Ken and um, we just used to make, we made home movies, Super 8 movies and then I got hold of a 16mm Bolex camera and um, we decided to make this short movie in the weekend. It was only supposed to be 10 minutes long to start with and we started um, shooting it and because uh, we used to work at a, a sort of a big newspaper and um, well the majority of us used to be photo engravers there, make, print the pictures and stuff and so we used to have to work six days a week and we only had Sundays free so we, we used to shoot it on the Sundays. I'll um, start going through the slides and then we'll sort of get a picture of how it all happened. I'll, I'll have to stand here. Yeah, oh, yeah yes, that's right. Right. Oh, these, these are all back to front. Do you realise that? Yeah. yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to just swap, swap them all around? Can you just flip, flip them around? And then I'll just talk a little bit. Yeah. Has anyone else got any questions while well, we just got to turn the slides around? They're all back to front. Any questions? <coughs> Now's your time. If you ever want to know anything about bad taste, ask now. <laughs> the bazooka? The bazooka was made of plastic. <laughs> It was a bit of old piping that I found lying around and I just put some wooden bits on it and painted it up. And <laughs> the budget, um, the budget ended up being a, uh, about 200,000 New Zealand dollars, about 200,000 marks. Eventually that's where the 35 mil blow up because it was all originally shot on 16 mil. Um, what happened was that the, the first three years that we were making it, um, we were just, as I say, making it during the weekends and I tried, the New Zealand Film Commission is the only way that you get money to make films in New Zealand and so I tried them a couple of times for money and they wouldn't give me any. Um, like I tried them at the beginning and I tried them after a couple of years but we kept on um, shooting the film and we ended up with a version that was about 75 minutes long we hadn't got the ending on and I showed that to them and um, for the, that time, the third time, they agreed to give me some money. So we'd spend about 17,000 marks um, of our own money, which was mainly mine, um, at that point. That was about three years had gone by, and um, as soon as the Film Commission gave us the money, it meant that I was able to leave my job and work on it full time, although well, all the other guys couldn't leave their jobs. So um, we were still filming during the weekends, but it meant that I could sort of sit at home all week and make the special effects. and. We shot, that's how we shot all the ending with all the effects, so I was able to spend much more time on it. Plus we had a little bit of money, like the Film Commission gave us about $30,000 to finish shooting the film. Which, yeah. And the rest of the money was um, for post-production. Because we sort of, what we did is, um, although the whole thing was made really roughly and, and simply and cheaply, we wanted to sort of make the post-production quite good, get some good music and, and good sound effects and stuff. So we, that's where we spent a lot of money doing that. Right, we're almost finished. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Back to front. Um, the slides, the slides that I've got to show you, there's about 50 of them. So I'll just sort of go through them and talk about each one as they come along. And if you've got any questions, does anyone else want to know anything at the moment? Just, just while we're sitting here waiting, there's something I just would like to find out from you guys. Um, we're sort of thinking about trying to get a bad taste soundtrack done, you know, an album or a CD. So, I, no, we just, it, it, I, I, all I want to know is if, is if we did, is there anyone here that would buy it? 
Can you, can you just stick your hands up? Would you, would you buy, do you want to, uh, is it better to do an album or a CD? <laughs> CDs? No CD, album. Right. I've got the slides in roughly the order of filming so that, um, you know, as the years go by, we'll look at the slides. Right. Um, this is a slide that was taken on the second day of shooting. We'd, uh, I mean, that's about the, the standard of the gear that we had. I, I used to sit on a stool. And um, that's the Bolex camera, and this is shooting the scene with Craig. What The, the story of Bad Taste changed a lot over the years. We, it, as I say, it started out as a 10-minute film, which was mainly concentrating on this guy who comes to this town, walks around to collect money, but he gets chased away by a strange-looking guy. <laughs> and he runs up to a house, he gets captured by some aliens, dragged off into the forest and eaten and killed. And it all, it all happens to this guy, and in the early days we never had any of the other commandos, you know, the, um, Frank, Ozzy, Barry and Derek, they never existed, they were never in the story. And so we were shooting this, I was playing the alien, and um, filming, so I used to sort of, I was mainly, the, I was the main cameraman, Ken shot stuff, when I, when I was in the picture it used to be shot by Ken, or if I wasn't in it, I used to film it. So we had a sort of an arrangement like that. All right, that's um, shooting the stuff of me. We, that, all the blood was made of syrup, and you just squirt it through tubes, and it comes out the neck. This, one, one of the problems with, with um, me sort of being the cameraman as well is I'd, ha as I'd get myself all set up in this sort of gear with a knife stuck in my throat and blood all over me, and then I'd have to adjust the camera. <laughs> or set the exposure so I'd be, <laughs> I'd be walking around trying to do the camera work with this, ni with this knife sticking in my neck. <laughs> you can see the guy down down here, you can see that there's um, some syringes which is the guy's holding that's, and there's a pipe that goes up through my neck and the, that's where we squirted the blood out. This is a... Um, this was the original Aliens. We went through two or three designs for the film, and um, I, I did the sculpting for it, and I don't like drawing pictures because I'm not a very good drawer. So what I do is I just get some plasticine and started to sculpt and sort of see what happens. So I worked for a while, and that's the first sort of face that I came up with, which I didn't really like fantastically much. So that one never, never got beyond the stage of... Um, of just being a, a clay sculpture. But this was like, you know, at the very beginning when, when we were starting to make the film and I was trying to think of what the alien should look like. So I went on and I tried a different design, which was that. And um, that one I quite liked. So we sort of thought that that might do for the alien, so we proceeded on. And uh, the next step to go to is to make a fiberglass sort of a skull for the, the mask. So I was using that design and that's in my father's shed in my parents' place because he had a lot of tools and advice and everything that I could use so I used to work in his shed and um, made that and then that was the finished alien head. Now what actually happened was that we shot quite a lot of film with this particular head and these particular aliens and um, at some point I decided that I didn't actually like them but we'd already shot a lot of stuff. As I say, that the um, original film was about the collector that gets captured and dragged into the trees and eaten, and we shot quite a bit of that story. And this is a scene that never made it into the film, <laughs> of him being dragged, and um, he was about to be killed, and we shot a lot of the stuff, but it, it, it um, ended up never being used because we changed the story halfway through. As we were making the film, I used to... Um, I, I didn't I didn't have any editing equipment so I used to just shoot it and keep it in the cans and um, I thought that the film was going to be about 10 minutes long but after a year 
I decided it was time to start to edit some of it together, so I hired some um, editing equipment. And I sat at home on the, uh, on the dining room table and um, cut it together, and I ended up being about an hour long. So we decided at that stage that we had to do something, either make it an hour or just make it shoot an extra half an hour and do it into it, make it into a full length feature. So eventually that's what we decided to do. When we, um, when we decided to make it into a feature, we sort of ended up having quite a long break from filming. I mean, I, I think we didn't shoot anything for three or four months while we were trying to figure out way to, ways to change the story and exactly what to do. So what, um, what I did during that time while we were working on the story and, and uh, thinking how we could expand into a feature is I decided I'd build some more equipment for the shooting. So I made a, um, a crane for the camera and a dolly all out of wood. And that's the shooting in the trees, um, the scene with Barry shooting at the alien. The camera used to just be screwed onto the end of the crane and you couldn't look through the camera while you were filming. You just had to point it at the actors and hope like hell that you were gonna get what you wanted. That's um, another, another way that we use the crane. Those are the fake legs that I hung on the end. This is when, the, if you remember the scene where the alien jumps over the top of Barry when he's running through the trees. And we wanted just a quick shot of the alien's legs flying over his head, so we obviously couldn't get a person to do that. So we just um, swung some, some dummy legs over his head. This is um, how we shot the scenes of the car driving along the road. I wanted to try and get the, ca the camera to crane up and down a bit, so we just stuck the thing on this trailer and drove along. It was incredibly wobbly and shaky, but we sort of got enough stuff that was usable. In the end, very, very dodgy. The um, crane ended up being very useful for when the scene where the alien was played by me was hanging over the cliff. Because it meant that we could, we could put the camera on the end of this thing and point it down and, you know, it wasn't particularly dangerous for the camera. Although it ended up being dangerous for me. So it's, I, I um, had to hang over, the, hang over the cliff tied by my foot exactly like in the movie. I didn't have any safety ropes or anything. It was bloody steep. What, um, what actually happened was that, uh, I don't know whether you know it, I suppose you do, that the two characters that are played by me were sort of like both together in the same scene. So I'm, I'm playing that alien and I'm also playing Derek who's talking to the alien. So we shot, all the, we shot all the scenes of me playing that alien first. Everything was shot because I had a beard and then I had to shave my beard off and become Derek. So for the scenes of when um, I was Derek and we needed some legs, we sort of got into a situation like that. That's me standing up there and that's Terry who plays Ozzy wearing jeans where like the alien was and he's lying down with a rope tied around his leg and that's how we sort of got the shots of the alien's feet for somebody else. Oh, it's got stuck. Right, that's just another shot of the crane that was very useful. It's a simple thing to make too. Very cheap. Often the usual um, crew that we had when we were shooting was um, generally never more than about three or four people. If, if we had, you know, more people in the film, like more aliens, and they'd come along for that day. But if it was just shots of Derek or shots of somebody else, then we, never, we only, only had three or four people usually. It's a shot of me shooting. Sometimes we um, hide the sound camera when we were shooting the dialogue scenes to get some sync sound, but we only had that on three or four days. About 95% of the film was shot on the Bolex, which is um, a great little camera. It was only spring round, but they're quite cheap. I mean, you can, you can get them anywhere. If you want to make any films, just grab one. Um, as I say about the crew, it was very small. Like, this is a typical day's filming. When, this, when it was basically just the actors in the film were the crew. So we're shooting a shot of um, Ozzy, and so Peter, who's Barry, is using the clapperboard, and um, Michael's holding a microphone on top of the roof. <laughs> Another bit of gear that I made um, during the break so that we'd have it ready for when we started shooting again was a steady cam. Uh, I just made one out of some bits of metal, and that's me running along 
with this sort of homemade steady cam strapped to me, it sort of worked okay. It wasn't fantastic, but it was quite fun anyway. It, it, yeah, they look good. <laughs> and that's Dean, who was one of the Dean's, the guy that um, plays the alien who gets the gun rammed through his stomach. And with him, you can see he's sort of like he's shooting. Because this is one of the days where we had a really small crew, so all the shots of uh, me were filmed by Dean, and then all the shots of Dean were filmed by me. You can see, like, he's filming, and he's got, and he's got blood all over his head from the scene that he's just done. We, um, the usual way, when you do gunfire and blood and, you know, people being hit by bullets in films, you use squibs, which are little explosive charges, but we never had those and they're a bit too dangerous to, to make, to put onto your body, so I um, came up with a different way, which was basically just a lot of hose pipes that we strapped on, and all you do is you just put a little bit of this blood, which is syrup with red food colouring in it, maple syrup, and you put a little bit of blood in the pipe, and then you just blow it with your mouth. You just blow hard, and if you get three or four people each on a pipe, and they blow at the right time, <laughs> You sort of get a machine gun effect. <laughs> it's a good way, of doing, good way of doing squibs when you haven't got any. <laughs> these are the two guys who are actually actually brothers, and um, they they came along to do these scenes, which were quite fun. The guy with a sledgehammer in his head. I was actually just wearing a wig with um, a balsa wood sledgehammer, and it's um, you can do, he just took it off like that. He didn't he, he didn't look very pleased. I think he must have too much blood on him. Right. Now that's the guy that gets the um, the gun stuck in his stomach, and all we did was just make a fake stomach which we lay over the top. And just if you use the right camera angles, you never notice the difference. But, I mean, half the thing, most of these special effects can be done really simply and cheaply. You've just got to be careful the way you film them. I think well, um, the way that they do them in you know, big budget Hollywood films is they make them so perfect that you can film them from any angle you want. You know, the director can do anything he likes with them. But all we did in bad taste is to make them to suit a certain camera angle. So I knew exactly how I was going to film the shot and I didn't change my mind at the last minute like some, like you read about some directors doing. I mean, I just knew how I had to film it, and so I built all the effects just to suit those particular angles, and it makes it much easier. That's filming the head. That was just a dummy head. I mean, it wasn't any more complicated than that. We just made a fake head, and um, the brains are sheep's brains. I used to go to the, the butcher's store before we did any filming and buy some lamb's brains. <laughs> Which I, I, I don't know whether they sell them here, I suppose they do, but you, you can buy them in New Zealand and boil them and eat them. But um, I've never had them and I never will. The way that we, um, that we did the scenes of Derek opening and closing that flap was we used the dummy head and we had um, we had some other people doing the hands, so that's like the dummy lying on the ground, and then there's, there's Ken in the foreground and, and a guy called Costa in the back, and we just, um, they just, just got a hand in, a sl in his sleeves, and the two of them are just, you know, using the hands like it's Derek's. <laughs> this scene is, um, is done exactly how you would guess it's done. <laughs> with the guy buried in the ground. That's in there. It's a very simple way to do it and it's quite effective. <coughs> the vomit scene. This was a scene that we um, that we shot with a, with a whole lot of people. We we wanted a big crowd, so we just invited all our friends to come along for that night's filming. 
I, um, I, I had a, I had a couple of, um, a couple of friends of mine mix the vomit. I just told them, can I bought a lot of stuff like uh, yogurt and um, food coloring and muesli, cornflakes, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and we, and we mixed, we mixed it all together, and um, and it actually tasted quite nice. <laughs> But then what, what happened was I decided that it was a bit thin, you know, the, it was a bit too runny, it wasn't very thick, thick so I asked them to, to make it thicker, and then I left the room and I went out to do something else, some more filming, and I came back and they'd made it thicker, so we gave it, we shot the scene with everybody drinking it, and then I had a taste of it, and they, everyone said it was awful, absolutely terrible, and I just was wondering why, because it tasted quite nice to me. And so then I tried some and it was absolutely awful, so I went back to them and I said, you know, what, what did you do? And what they did to make it thicker is they went to the garden and got dirt and just mixed dirt in with the, um, just dirt, dirt from the garden in with the stuff. And so it did, it tasted absolutely foul, but you can see what we're doing, it's just a, it's a dummy. It's a dummy of the um, guy with his head and then um, Peter's just pouring the, the vomit from a, a milk bottle into the funnel and it comes out the mouth. How many dummies do you use? Um, a lot. <laughs> a lot, just, uh, we, just a dummy forever, whenever we needed one. So it was just, that's just shooting the, um, the drinking scene with a, um, a big camera crew again, a one. <laughs> Some of the, um, the sort of funny problems that we had filming that you don't normally think about is because um, we were shooting at the weekends, you were never quite sure what was, you know, whether the um, the guys would be able to come along on Sunday. You know, sometimes we wanted to film, and um, they had things to do, so they would sort of ring me up and say that I can't, I can't come along. You know, can, can you do it without me? And I say no, I can't. So we'd have to put it off till the next week. And one of the funniest things happened that the guy, the guy there, there who who plays Frank, he phoned me up. Um, on the morning of, that we were filming on, on the Sunday, and he says, Peter, I can't film today, I can't film today. I said, why? He says, oh, he says, I, 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 was, I was in the pub, and, and there was this awful fight, and, and I was involved in this brawl, and I, and I can't film, and I said, look, just come along, and I'm sure, sure that we can do it. But he, but he uh, came, came along, and he looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> So on uh, that particular day, we shouldn't, we couldn't shoot any close-ups of Frank. We just, we just had to shoot wide shots. The scene where we were shooting, um, the opening scene of the film on the beach, we filmed with um, only three of us. There was Peter, uh, her, and me, and Ken, and the whole scene was shot with just a crew, a crew of three. So what had what? happen oft, often is that I was having to operate the crane and push this thing along while I was filming Peter and Ken. That's the setup that we did for the, you know, the set that right at the beginning where the camera sort of like goes over the guy's head and, and goes up over the shed and you see Barry walking along. That's that particular setup. We just had the camera on the end of the crane again. There's Ken with his dummy head. There was a, some stuff that we shot where, um, where Barry shoots and he blows a big hole in the side of the head, like you can see there, and then he shoots again and he blows the rest of the head off. Well, I sh we shot that stuff and I looked at the dummy head that you can see there and it didn't look very convincing on the film, so we, we didn't use that particular stage that you see there. We didn't use the bit with just the hole in his eye. So we chopped that out and we just went straight for the, the shot of him with half his head gone. Sorry. Um, what we what we did about this about this time, I decided that the aliens that we were using weren't um, very good. I didn't like them, and so I um, set about sculpting up some new aliens, trying again. And we came up with this design, which was the the final design. So we went through the usual stages of um, doing the fiberglass skull, the cables. Uh, pull various bits of the rubber so that that's what gives them their expressions and their lip movements and their <laughs> eyebrow movements. There's some balloons that um, are in the forehead that make the forehead throb up and down but you don't really see that in the movie, it doesn't show up. That's uh, dressing up as one of the aliens, that's Craig. And um, 
that blue van that's behind, which is Derek's van, that's actually mine. That's what I drive around in. So we just, it was very useful to, to, um, to drive all the costumes around. And so that's what we used to do. The under, under part of the costumes were made of fiberglass with the shoulders and the bums. And they just used to be strapped on on a big fat stomach. And then over the top of that, we just put the jeans and the shirt on. And up like that. <laughs> That's all the stuff. We never had, I don't, I don't think we had more than about three or four aliens in any scenes. I think there was only about four of them. But that's all the, um, the gear that we had to carry around to, to, for the four aliens. It was quite a, quite a lot. And uh, I used to work in a little room underneath my house. And that's, it used to get very messy. That's the sort of halfway through filming with all the junk lying around. Bits of bodies and heads and rocket launchers and foam. What, um, at the very, when, when we finally got some money from the film commission and we could start sort of, you know, getting expensive, we um, came up with the ending. We never had the ending with the house. I mean, we, we, we were going to end the film in a different way with um, Craig being eaten by the aliens, but when, all that, when that all changed, we had to think up a new way to end the film. And we'd been filming around this old house where the aliens had kidnapped a guy, but we never... We never knew that that house was going to become a spaceship until the very end of the film when we suddenly got that idea and thought, wow, that's great. So that happened, um, that was one of the last ideas that we ever had and it was one of the last scenes that we filmed. So we had to figure out how we were going to make the spaceship. Um, first of all, we had to blow a hole in the house and then we had to make the house take off. So we decided, obviously, to use models and um, I wanted to make the biggest models I could because that's the easiest way to shoot miniatures is to just make them as large as you possibly can. So fortunately we had a friend who'd, um, who, who had a, a farm that we could use so we went on a field in the farm and we built a model of the house that was actually about half size. So this is starting to build the model. It's, um, it's, it was all made of wood, it's just one of the walls. I built it, um, I built it with a guy called Tony Hiles who the film commission um, uh, sort, of, sort of told to um, help to help me. They, me, me and uh, Tony sort of worked on co-producing the film at the very end, and um, he sort of came along to help me build the house. <coughs> and that's just, we've been building. We're building the walls, and we've got to take the walls down onto the field and build the house down there. So we, we um, used to carry them down in my van. and eventually the house was starting to take some shape. We only built two sides of it because that's the only angles that we were going to see it from. So that's just from the back and you can see how it's being supported and propped up. It's quite large, I mean it's almost the size of a real house. It was about half, the half scale, it was about half the size of what the, the actual house was. And that's it in the middle of the field. On the very last day before we were shooting, um, it was still had a, we still had a lot to do to get it finished, so I, I called up a lot of friends and they came along and helped paint it and get it ready for the day. Where the explosion happened, which is on the corner of the house, we just made a big hole and put all the explosives ready and then we put some very loose boards over the top of the hole to cover it up. And then we set the explosion off. The rocket, when the guy fires a rocket launcher and the rocket flies towards the house, um, that was a skyrocket, which we have a sort of a, th a thing called Guy Fawkes, which you obviously don't have here. But we have, um, is when we have firework displays, to have skyrockets, and we <coughs> fired a skyrocket along a string. The, um, the next thing that we had to do with the house was to make the lawn of the house pull underneath. So we, we used the same model, and we, but we had to make the um, lawn and some of the trees around the house, so we started to work on it. And that's all we did with making the, the grass slide away is we just got a big chunk of astro turf and pulled, a, pulled Terry along on it. The house, that, I mean that, that house is only a half scale one but you see it a lot in the movie and you never know that it's half scale because it's so large that you can get away with it. What happened next was that we had to make the house take off into space 
leave the ground. Now that thing was so heavy and solid that it, was, that it wasn't going to go anywhere. So we had to build a smaller model of the house, which was about a metre wide and made mainly of cardboard, some wood. And it was put on the end of a, of a big camera crane. And then that's, that's me down there with the camera. And then I filmed it through these trees. And then the house was there with a smoke machine and the crane back and then they pointed downwards. And the smoke was very important because it had to hide the crane from the camera. You can see what happened when the wind blew and we didn't, uh, and revealed the crane. It took us about nine different takes before we finally got the, um, the one that we used because we'd get halfway up and there'd be a big gust of wind and all the smoke would blow away and we'd see the crane. After this, we had one last thing to do with the house, was, which was to shoot it um, rotating in space. And even this model that we used here was still too big to do that, so we had to make another model of the house. I was getting really sick of the house at this stage. <laughs> so we made a, a, a really small one out of cardboard. And that's just the house being made on the table, just uh, bits of cardboard and balsa wood. And um, that's the one that we use for the space scenes. We just put the house on a uh, gramophone turntable and slowly turned it round and shot it against some black and then we, su we wound the film back in the camera and superimposed some stars and the planets. All the planets that are in the film, you know, you see that in the scenes of space there's a little planet on the side of the frame. They were just, um, they're photos of planets that I cut out of a book. And so that was the three houses. And I think that's the last slide. Yeah, it is. Right. Right, so has anybody got any questions that they want to ask about those? <laughs> no. Pardon? We're, we're here or New Zealand or? Oh, everywhere. What, for bad taste? Um, well, it was screened in the theatres in New Zealand. It's um, never been screened in the theatres in U the, in the United States, in America. It's only ever been released on video in America. Um, it was screened in France, um, Italy. It was screened in Italy about uh, three or four months ago, I think. It's um, going to be screened in Australia next month, finally. But the Australians have cut um, about 65 seconds out of it. <coughs> Bunch of wimps. Um, and, of course, it was screened in the theatres in England, which was uncut, which I was absolutely amazed at. But that's the best, best place if, if you want to get a tape of the film uncut, you know, an, an English language tape, I, I guess that the English one is probably the best one to get. Although it's available in Holland, isn't it? <coughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Yep. Uh, why don't uh, play women in bad taste? Why are there no women in bad taste? Uh, yeah, well, there's a girl at the beginning. Um, talking. Uh, the, well, the reason why there's no women is basically because I was just using uh, people that I used to work with at, at, at the newspaper, friends of mine, and, um, and, and there were no women working there. <coughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't have, have any ac access to women actors. But it was just the way that the story developed. I mean, there was no set rules. I mean, we didn't start saying, right, we're going to make a film with no women. We just, you know, we just had these guys there who were, you know, I said, do you, do you want to help make a film? And they said, yes. So we set out and we just started to make a film with, with guys. And it ended up being a film with guys. Are there women in the uh, <laughs> Well, sort of. In the, in the Feebles, there are women, but they're all puppets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I see, in, in the masks. Um, well, there, there were women in the crew, yeah, yeah. And, and there were, were some of the feeble puppeteers were women, yeah. And did you turn up the way you the No, the Feebles was made with a um, sort of a professional film crew, like a real movie. that was shot in um, over 12 weeks, you know, like straight shooting. 
Uh, so the Feebles was made under completely different circumstances to the bad taste and had a much bigger budget, about $700,000. Any other questions? Yeah. Besides gathering some experience, what did you intend by making that taste? What, what did I intend? Yeah. Um, Besides making money on... Well, I, I, I never, never intended to make any money, and we haven't made much money on it, but it's... Um, uh, well, I, I intended, what I originally intended was that I'd been making Super 8 films for a long, long time, ever since I was about nine years old. And I'd always wanted to use 16mm because it's much better. But I wasn't able to afford a camera until I left school and started to work. So I bought this Bodex camera. And, um, and originally Bad Taste was going to be a short film just to try the camera out. So that was what I originally intended, was to, to learn how to use 16mm and just make a short film. So in the beginning you had no scripts. Pardon? In the beginning you had no scripts. Uh, no, there was never a script. Never. I mean, there's there never been anything written down for bad taste. It was, I mean, it was sort of made up as we went along, yeah. as they say. What were you being influenced by? My influences on bad taste. Um, well, my, I, I sort of, I, I liked, I guess the biggest influence was probably stuff like Dawn of the Dead. Um, the Evil Dead, I can't remember the exact timing. I, I think I saw The Evil Dead after I started making Bad Taste. I can't remember when it came out, but um, Dawn of the Dead was the main influence for doing it. I just, I just, I like Dawn of the Dead because I like all the zombies walking around the shopping mall and getting, getting killed in entertaining ways. So I suppose that's what I was trying to do with Bad Taste, is kill a lot of zombies in entertaining ways, aliens, whatever. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had moments where I said I wanted to forget the whole thing. A lot a lot of moments. What um what you tend to do or what happened with me was that uh, because I was spending my own money, when after about two years I'd think, God, I don't want to carry on with this because something would happen and I get really depressed and I think, Oh, this is never gonna get anywhere, why bother? And then I'd suddenly realise that I'd spent, at that point, maybe $10,000 on it. I thought, God, I can't stop, otherwise I'm going to waste $10,000. It's going to be terrible. So really, it came to a point where, in those sort of moments where you want to give up, it was the fact that we'd spent so much money that sort of kept me going, more than anything. Tell us something of the reactions of the critics. <laughs> the uh, critics in New Zealand, which I was incredibly worried about, um, we're very good. I mean, we, we never got a bad review in New Zealand. It became, what, what happened in New Zealand is it, it, it actually became a, um, a splatter film that the sort of liberal, trendy, yuppie sort of people could enjoy. Because the sort of people in New Zealand that would go to sort of like um, art movies and would never ever go to a splatter film, never go to a gore film, sort of felt that they had to go and see Bad Taste because it was a New Zealand film and they wanted to support the New Zealand film industry. And I think that, the, that it was like the first better film they'd ever seen in their life and, and, they, and they actually quite, quite enjoyed it. So, <laughs> so they, they, um, the reviews were really good in New Zealand. Um, uh, the reviews in America were okay. On, on, they were just video reviews and they were all sort of... You know, they, they, they tend to be quite kind, actually, most of the reviews. We had one or two bad ones in England. Did I intend to break any gore standards? Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any, any worry about the gore. I just, you know, I was happy to make it as gory as I possibly could. And I just sort of, well, I mean, what, it's funny, you know, I, I don't particularly like gore when it's absolutely serious. I like it when you can laugh at it. So, I mean, everything, whenever we had gore, I just sort of tried to make it so over the top that you had to laugh. Because I think there's, a, there's like a limit, you know, there's, there's movies like, um, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Henry, where, which don't have a great deal of gore, and they're actually very disturbing. But when you do make, when you make them more gory, they become funny. I mean, it's the same with the, 
the re reanimator or dawn of the dead the more gore you have it actually becomes more funny so that's sort of what i was doing with bad taste is just piling the gore on and making people laugh i think most of the um most of the gore in the film is sort of real meat and, and livers and kidneys and hearts and all that sort of stuff uh, any more questions <coughs> oh yeah what was the rating like in new zealand oh in, uh, in england it was a um 18 they have an 18 certificate but it was uncut so <laughs> italy i don't know i'm sorry i don't know in in new zealand our censorship is very very good in new zealand i mean that, that was an, a six an r16 which meant that 16 year olds could go and see it no no cuts i mean in in, in new zealand we have um we just have the reanimator and dawn of the dead and all that stuff just is uncut it's just no problem no one worries no one cares <laughs> Pardon? A, big a, a financial loss for me? No, uh, no. I, I put, I ended up putting about seventeen thousand dollars into the film while I was making it, but I've got, I've got that back. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's made, made a, made a profit, but only a small one. No, it's, it's, it's a success. It's, the, it's the, it's the only, only, only New Zealand film ever to have made a profit. <laughs> That's the truth. Honest. <laughs> Is New Zealand in the, in, in the last 50 years, uh, in the last 10 years, uh, New Zealand's made about 50 feature films, and Bad Taste is the only one that's actually made made a made a profit. So New Zealand should make more splatter movies. <laughs> the Quiet Earth, no, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think the Quiet Earth has made a profit. That had a fairly big budget by New Zealand standards, about three and a half million or something, I think. And I don't, I don't think think that, it, that it's made a profit yet. You'd be surprised. That it takes a long time. And the Quiet Earth was not a huge success. Yeah. If you could make a film without compromises, what would it look like? Um, well, bad taste I made with no compromises. Uh, the feebles I yeah, made with no compromises. You have to deal with uh, lack of money. And uh, lack of yeah. Well, I, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> Well, lack of money didn't stop us doing anything on, on bad taste, really. I mean, if you could fill, if, if you could fulfill your wishes. Yeah. yeah. If I could fulfill my mission in making a film. Um, well, I mean, I, I just want to make, uh, I, I want to make films whatever I feel like making at the time. So, I mean, maybe, I mean, this year I might feel like making something and then in six months I might have a new idea and, and want to make a, a new film. I, I, I want to make a, um, I want to make a fantasy film like, like Ray Harryhausen's movies because I'm a big fan of his. So one of my ambitions is to make a, a film with stop motion monsters in it. You know, a sort of an Indiana Jones, Conan the Barbarian type thing with, with monsters. But one day, maybe. What's up with Brain Dead? Brain Dead. Um, well, Brain Dead's a film that um, you might have read about. It's a zombie film. We've written the script. It's a real sort of splatter thing. It's it's very much like the reanimator or evil dead oh, it's a different story sort of, you know but it's that sort of genre um and we well we're, that, i mean that's i hope that that'll be the next film i make um we couldn't get the, we couldn't get the money together uh, early last year we were hoping to make it early last year and it was too expensive and we couldn't get the money so we made the feebles instead which was much cheaper but now that the feebles is finished um I can sort of try and get branded off the ground again. We haven't got any money in place yet, but it might happen now. It gets easier. Now that I've made the feebles and people can see the feebles, you know, it sort of gets easier to raise money for the next one. So hopefully we'll get branded made. But that, yeah, I mean, it'll be the, well, we might shoot it by the end of this year or maybe early next year, I don't know. Did you get any I got no directing offers because of bad taste. I, I'm starting to get some directing offers. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm starting to get some directing offers after the Feebles. Some people in, 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 in America have, been, um, have seen the Feebles and are talking about things. What? Um, well, New New Line are talking about me doing Elm, Elm Street Six. 
but I don't know. I don't know about that. It's not. It's not. There, there isn't anything definite. They're only talking about it. So who knows? You never know. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Eric says that in Auckland would be amazing, but what's wrong with Auckland? What's wrong with Auckland? There's an Auckland joke. Auckland is the capital city of New Zealand. Um, I don't know what your comparison would be in Germany, but, um, but Wellington, which is the town that I come from, is I think is much more down to earth than Auckland. Auckland is like where a lot of trendy yuppies sort of live. And um, I don't know how you, what the comparison would be here. So slight, slightly, slightly more arrogant people in Auckland. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. All right. Well, if, if if you want to take any photos or anything else, we'll just be hanging around out in the foyer. Say say hello. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah.